So this oligosaccharides or the little carbohydrate chains or one carbohydrate is attached to the uh, immunoglobulin as well. In case of IgG, if N-acetylglucosamine is present on the constant region, then this will be, this IgG will be a pro-inflammatory immunoglobulin. This is a very important thing to know. But if instead of N-acetylglucosamine, sialic acid is attached here, then this will be an anti-inflammatory immunoglobulin. So same immunoglobulin, IgG, can be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory depending upon what saccharide, what carbohydrate is attached. If it is n acetyl glucosamine, then it is pro-inflammatory uh, immunoglobulin. If it is sialic acid, then it is anti-inflammatory immunoglobulin. So that's about it, the structure. We'll talk about genetics in a second. Let me just very quickly repeat the structure for you. We have two heavy chains. We have two lab light chains. One thing which I did not mention, I think I should mention it. Heavy chains are of five types. These five types are IgM, IgG, uh, sorry, IgD, IgG, IgE, and IgA. So this sequence that I wrote is different from the sequence that is found in the books and that is uh, used in teaching. I wrote this sequence, why I like this sequence is that this is how the genes are arranged for the immunoglobulin heavy chains. The first gene that is encountered is IgM, I will talk about it. Second is IgD, then is IgG, E and A. So it makes it easy for me to keep the sequence connected to the genetic order as well. So that is one. The heavy chains, this is called isotypes. So what is isotype? So let me talk about that. Isotype, allotype, and idiotype. Isotype means different types of immunoglobulin classes or different classes of immunoglobulin within one individual of a species. So I belong to a species human. I am one individual and within me, myself, I would have immunoglobulin M, D, G, A, E and A. These are my isotypes. Immunoglobulin within one individual of a species. Now, allotype. Immunoglobulins that are different between two individuals of the same species. So you and I, species human, hopefully if uh, I do not have some leopards and lions listening to me. Species human, I have IgM, D, G, E and A and so do you. But my IgM is slightly different from your IgM. My IgD is slightly different from your IgD and so these small differences that are in multiple, in various individuals of the same species, these differences are classified as allotypes. And finally is the idiotype, idio from the idiot to not known, this binding site is the idiotype. Why? Because this is going to be different even within me, I have millions, actually um, about 10 million uh, immunoglobulin binding sites are possible or present at one time in an individual. So these are all idiotypes. So based on the idiotype, there are 10 million types of immunoglobulins. Based on the heavy chain, there are five types of immunoglobulins. Now, why I wanted to discuss this is that the light chain also is of two types. Just like heavy chain is of five types, M, D, G, E and A, the light chain has lambda and kappa types. So, I will go here. We have the kappa type and we have lambda type. So, kappa and lambda. Kappa are usually about 60 percent or more and lambda are about 30 percent or less. What that means is 
that the constant region here of a light chain is either made up of kappa chain or it is made up of lambda chain. Now, the genes that are responsible for these areas are, so kappa chain is on chromosome number 2, lambda chain genes are on chromosome number 22 and heavy chain variable region genes are on chromosome number 14, chromosome number 14. In one immunoglobulin, there is going to be one type of heavy chain and one type of light chain. So, kappa or gamma or sorry lambda and similarly here m or d or g or e or a. So, that is very important to recognize. There was one more concept that I wanted to talk about. So, it is not coming to me at this time, we will continue about that later on, but this is the structure and some high level functions of the immunoglobulin. The question that we are going to answer in our next lecture is how, what is the genetics of this variable region? What happens? What is DNA rearrangement? What is the uh, somatic hypermutation? What is the RAG RAG1 enzyme? Uh, and so on. So, there are multiple enzymes in genetics which we need. What is class switching? We will do that. So, we will stop here and we will move on to the genetics. Thank you.